Welcome to part two of episode seven, Breaking Down the Bid. We joined the guys where we left them last week. And this is one of those things that, you know, we've talked about charging for paint, that it's all up in flux. You know, some people love it, some people are against it. That's another debate. If you're an efficient painter, you bid it for four hours and you can get it done in three. If you're concerned about that at the end of the day, you can give money back to the homeowner. You can take that 50 bucks off your bid at the end of the day. That's a personal choice of, hey, I got it done quicker, so I'm gonna do this homeowner solid and cut 50 bucks off my bid because that's my shop rate. Those are all things that you can do because it's your business, but it's a for-profit industry. So in my opinion, I put that money in my pocket. I move on to the next job to make more money. Exactly, I feel that's what you have to do. You have to take your wins when you can because the next job you might underbid it, something might catastrophically go wrong. You can't necessarily, let's just say you have your, your sprayer and a hose blue and also paint is, you know, paint is going everywhere, right? That might be a lot of time at best you have to clean up. At the very best, you have to clean up. Hopefully you had everything masked off nicely, but let's just say something wasn't masked off because the paint will always find the one spot. Now you might have to clean, hire a carpet cleaner or you might have to do something else. Well, where does that money come from? Do you, can, can you go to the homeowner and say, hey, my hose blew, I got paint all over your carpet, so I'm gonna charge you extra so that I can pay for the carpet cleaning. They're gonna look at you like you're insane. But if you take your wins when you can, that helps to alleviate some of the losses. And these profits that we're talking about, these are the things that you take and you roll right back into your business. Because like we talked about in an earlier episode, you should be paying yourself anyway. So you should be getting that, that your shop rate is 50 bucks an hour and you're the only painter. You should be paying yourself that. That's what you make as a salary, quote unquote. And this other stuff that's profit, that is what goes back into your business. That's your rainy day fund to cover, again, any of those ancillary accidents or costs that come up. And if you don't believe it happens, go back and watch some of our other videos that we've talked about. We, sh we have a lot of fun with them. That stuff happens and I'm sorry, it sucks when it does, but you've got to pay for that as the business owner. You can't expect the homeowner to pay for it. Granted, if the homeowner walks through and kicks over a bucket of paint, that's on them, and then you can charge them for it. But if you just kick that over in the middle of their living room, that's on you. You've got to take care of that, and that money's got to come from somewhere. If it doesn't come out of your profits, that comes out of your bottom line and your pocket. Exactly. A lot of times, guys look at profit, like let's just take that $100 that we, we had just referenced, like, oh, cool. And they, they take that $100 and they blow it, right? It, it's gone. But like you said, the profit belongs to the business. Now, in future episodes, we'll talk about how you as the owner can take some of that profit and use it. But technically, that profit is not yours. So that profit goes to the business. You can then use that money to buy things in bulk to get your, your prices cheaper. You can use it to uh, uh, buy new tools. You can use it to take care of other aspects, whether it could be a, an accountant or, or you know, whatever. You know, you, you need a new truck, you need new tools or, or ladders or whatever. See, all these things come out of that money. So little by little, you need to build that nest egg. That doesn't get built typically thousands of dollars at a time. It's the 60, 80, hundred dollars that we just talked about. And that's where that money comes from. You're hundred percent right. And you've got to build that over time. And that's how you grow your business, which again, we're going to talk about in some future episodes about how to you know set those goals and go forward with that. But if you don't have that money sitting there, you'll always just be at that one level. You'll never be able to grow. And then you know, business will just kind of stagnate. Yes. And I'll speak for, for Minnesota when winter comes, typically things get a little bit leaner, but there, there's still expenses that need to get paid. So if money isn't coming in as much or as quickly as it did in the summertime and you have no money, well, then guess who's going to pay for that, right? That, that's going to have to come out of your pocket. And at that point, then your, your shop rate, even though you claim you're making $50 an hour or whatever it is, it's going to drop. And I think we talked about this before that, uh, people buy a job and all, all they're trying to do is stay busy. And I, I talked to a guy just today, wonderful, wonderful man, one of the busiest guys you'll ever see, but he's not making any money. And the reason is 
his his whole mental uh, business sense is to be the low guy, be a really nice guy, help the homeowner out, and then he hopes that he'll get I don't I don't know what he hopes more jobs or or whatever in the long run, but the the reality is that homeowner is very thankful, but then the next guy he says, oh this guy is super super cheap. And so then you can't charge what you should be charging. So you get stuck at a certain level. I can sit at home on my couch and watch daytime soaps, eating bonbons and make zero money. That's a lot less work than going out and busting my butt for zero money. I mean, so it's a give and take all the way across the board. And these numbers will flush themselves out. If you're the low guy, you'll probably have way too much work and you won't know to, but I'm not making any money, but I'm always working. Well, then you got to bring these numbers up, bring that profit margin up and then if you go too high, all of a sudden you're like, I have zero work. So you've got to balance that out. It's all about finding that balance. And like you said, you've got to plan for those lean times because even in the summers in Minnesota, there's times where all of a sudden the market just decides to dry up. Everybody decides to go on vacation, whatever it is. And you've still got to cover the cost of running the business and that money's got to come from somewhere. So it doesn't come out of that fund that you've built up. There again, it's dipping into your own personal bank account, your own savings account to keep things afloat. Yeah, and, and to go with your point, that's where uh, closure rate, which we'll, we have a whole episode on what, what is a closure rate, what is a good closure rate. Uh, during COVID, people remember in 2020, all of a sudden everything took off. You couldn't get material. Everybody wanted stuff done because they're all home. My company, we were working like dogs, right? We were we were busted butt. We were working hard. And I, I'm sitting there running the numbers. Of course, that was when inflation started really going up too, if, if we remember. And... I'm running the numbers and I'm like, man, I'm, I'm working my tail off and I'm, I'm not seeing, you know, the, the bank account isn't going the same direction as, as the work. I mean, we're still making money, but it wasn't the same. And it dawned on me, boy, like that inflation just really snuck up on me. So it's like, I fortunately caught it after like a month. So it's like, did it hurt me a little bit, but not, not horribly, but that's also where you got to stay in tune to your numbers. But then I, I had to adjust my rates accordingly. And that's where a lot of guys uh, get in trouble as they start at a certain rate and they're just afraid to raise it. The inflation, that's one of those sneaky things that just eats away at your profit margin. And if you don't catch it all of a sudden, everything you just said, you're not making the money you were and going, well, wait a second. And then if you let it go too long, then you're playing catch up again and you're dipping back into that nest egg to cover you know, the day-to-day -day expenses, which you shouldn't be, which is great that you have that nest egg to do that because then you can keep the business afloat while you adjust your numbers back up to start covering those costs again. And that's a smart way to do business. And again, one of the many, many things that, you know, we could do another full episode probably just on the hidden costs of running a business that are in there that you have to account for that that's where that $105 in that one bedroom, that's where those profits go to, to cover those little things that you don't always catch right away. Yes, and I, I was talking to a guy uh, just today on on Facebook, and we had just po we just posted our episode on the need to to make sure that you mark up your paint prices and buy in bulk. And he was kind of he was super nice, but like oh well, you know, he felt it was dishonest to charge someone more than what he paid. So he didn't obviously watch our episode. He just commented on it, which that's fine. Still appreciated the comment. But th the reality of the situation is, you know, what are you doing? And I, I asked him, like, well, then how do you compensate? He's like, well, I just raised my dollar per hour. And I'm just like, you know, that's a tomato, tomato thing. So so now you, you're fluffing up this number so that you can keep this number low. I mean, to me, if you want to talk dishonesty, that's more dishonest than saying, I charge X amount of dollars for this and I charge X amount of dollars for that. But w whatever works for you, again, wonderful guy, but there's easier ways to do it. And this is why we're presenting it to you. To that point, at the end of the day, whether you charge more for labor or you charge more for paint, the number comes out to be the same at the end of the day, which that's what the homeowner, that's what your clients see is that final number. Does it really matter where that fluff is? And that's the thing. But, you know, quite honestly, it's like, you need to know where your money's going, right? So we're going to take the $50 an hour. Let, let's just say this guy's like, well, I charge 65. So he's got an extra $15, you know, woohoo for him, which that's wonderful, right? The reality is you're not at 65. Are you even at 50? 
that becomes the question. And the truth is, he doesn't know. He isn't obviously doing his numbers. So the, what we're trying to get across is you have to at least know your numbers. If you don't know the numbers, then you're just out there twisting in the wind and making it up as you go along, which yeah. it works for a while, but eventually it is going to catch up with you. As always, thank you for watching. Please join us next Thursday as we discuss the basic operating costs of the business and how to cover them.